Why, hello guys. Welcome back to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today we have a review, but not only a review, I have two first impressions to kind of throw in here of these guys. We have an Asher knife and a giant mouse ace. We're going to do some first impressions, and then we'll get to it. Hey guys, before you get into the video, I just want to let you know, if you use my promo code EEDC at White Mountain Knives, you get 10% off. If you're interested, check out my Patreon. We give bi-monthly giveaways. The Patreon's www.patreon.com forward slash EEDC. Also, check me out on Instagram. I only use that to communicate with you guys, so check me out. Everyday underscore EDC 77. If you guys have questions, want to talk, just hit me up. All right, enjoy the video, guys. All right, so... The review knife for the day, a little bit of hypocrisy going on here. We have a Savivi lint-free cloth with a CJRB scoria underneath. But before we get to the review, let's do a couple first impressions. And I did these and I wasn't happy with the unboxing, so I want to redo it and go from there. So this is the Giant Mouse or Ace Nimbus. This thing, my first impression, I, I did it and I put it back in the box. So this is kind of the same thing as the first impression. So this did have that rock scale pattern on this micarta. And I got these from Jake. So what Jake ended up doing is Jake took this and sanded it down to try and get rid of some of that rock pattern. Because that pattern just, it's not conducive for the hands. Visually it looks good in pictures, but in person it's kind of one of those where you're like, eh. So the knife comes pretty damn centered. And... Oop. Very, very nice opening right off the bat. The spine is crowned, so that's a cool touch. I don't know what blade steel this is. Like I said, keep in mind, this is a first impression. I wonder if it says it on the box. It does not. So this is the Giant Mouse Nimbus. First and foremost, very solid in hand, and it definitely has that, like, vox nice, like, aesthetic slash feel in hand. It does feel really, really good, and it contours to your hand very well. The blade shape is a full flat grind with the drop point leads me to believe that it's going to be extra slicey, so that's very cool. I don't even know the price on this guy. I'm just kind of giving an overview of how I feel about it. The action is pretty good, but I do think the pivot is loose, so we got to tighten that up and we'll see how that goes. But you can reverse flick it. I think you can thumb flick it. Yeah, it works pretty well. Actually, with thumb flick, it's kind of cool. You stick in there and you kind of roll into the tight spot here and it kind of gives it a little bit more pressure so that's nice this is a very cool solid knife this is a chunky knife but not in the terms of like ultra chunky in hand it just feels ergonomically solid but dense these are some thick stainless steel liners in here there is some milling going on but it's a pretty cool knife so i'm excited to check this out get to know it a little bit more and thank you jake for sending this in on that same token jake sent in a asher knife this is the Asher Knives Spyro. Pretty cool packaging. Comes in this, like, elegant... Uh, I don't know what that's called. That soft stuff. Anyways, so this is a G10, and it kind of looks like it has, like, a wood grain pattern to the G10, which makes it look pretty cool. We do have a cover plate right here for the pocket clip. And then we have a pocket clip here, which is recessed with some flathead screws. Very, very nice. I appreciate that, because... How many times do we complain about that? Well, this is an S35 VN steel, so that's cool. I'm curious now as to what price this is actually coming in at. With S35, some pretty nice finishes. And then you do have this backspacer here that is jade, so you can accent it however you want if you want to color it, or you can just leave it as jade. It's got some recessed liners. Very nice flipping action. Some recessed liners that are not milled out, but it does feel ultra solid in hand again. Just like that Ace, it's like... I, I'm liking the dense feel of these knives. It makes you feel really good about it. And I can't tell. It feels like it's got a little bit of up and down. I don't know how used or whatever this knife is. It does feel like it has a little bit of up and down, and it is a little loose. So this action is going to change for the review once I tighten that up. But it is easy to access with the thumb studs. It is easy to access with the reverse flick. Pretty deep carry, so that's cool. Overall, very, very cool, and depending on the price, may be an excellent, excellent knife. We'll see. I'm not quite sure what that price is for the S35. If it's a surprisingly low price, it's going to change my opinion completely of the knife. I didn't notice this does have a really nice tumble finish going on here. I don't know if you guys can catch that. 
So very, very cool. Thank you, Jake, for sending these in. Jake also sent some handmade strops. Now, I don't actually... I'm not going to make this video go much longer. I don't have one right in front of me. I'll, I'll do... <laughs> he's going to hate this. I'm going to do a review of these handmade strops. Why? Because I already love them. And why? Because he has trouble getting some of the materials because the materials are kind of like a byproduct of some of the stuff that he does. But they're awesome and he needs to start doing this and we all need to get on him to start doing it. So we'll I'll show those in another clip when I'm doing like a sharpening video or something. But on to the meat and potatoes, guys. This is the CJRB Scoria. So this knife, I just say it outright, is probably my budget knife of the year at this point. But let's get you guys some specs, some size comparisons, and then we will go on with just my overall thoughts. The overall weight's coming in at a 3.64 ounces. Relatively good, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure how how long the blade is. I'm going to guess it's close to three and a half inches, but that's what we have this for. We can check it out right now. So the blade length's coming in right at three and a half inches, so you're getting just about that blade length to weight ratio, so that's a good thing. Overall, it's coming in at about eight inches, and the cutting edge, due to that large finger choil, is coming in at about three and an eighth. Yes, I know you guys don't like the three and the eighth or the three point or the one three point one two five or whatever. I know you guys don't like talking like that, but it's just the reality of the situation. Get you guys a blade stock. This blade stock's pretty narrow. Coming in at almost a hundred thousandths, guys. Like stupid narrow. This thing should be ultra slicey. Okay, so this is the unique thing here. It's coming in at 20 thousandths behind the edge, all right? So 20 thousandths behind the edge for a 100 thousandths thick blade, you'd be like, what? That's not very good. They should have got it thinner behind the edge. Yes and no. Because what I'm going to tell you is blade geometry plays just as an effect as when you're cutting as how sharp your blade or thinness behind the edge is. Yes, blade geometry is also thinness behind the edge, but... If that thinness behind the edge pretty much carries, there's no wedging here. I'm not going to cut and it's going to have to wedge in through something. I'm going to cut and it's going to slide right through because there's nothing to catch on. And that's a cool thing. So they did a very, very low angled flat grind that starts about three quarters of the way up the blade, which is just fine. I'm actually happy with the 20 thousandths behind the edge because with such a narrow blade stock, it's going to lend to a little bit more toughness of this edge while still having that thin blade stock to glide on through material. It's a relatively thin knife, too. This thing's coming in at 415 thousandths thin. The impressive part about that is that not only is it that thin, but it is contoured. Overall height's coming in at 1.27 inches. But it's contoured, guys. So, oh, man, is this thing a winner. Because this these contoured, it's a gentle contour, and it just lends to very, very nice feeling feels in hand. I mean, the feels on this are really, really nice. Now, if you were to bear down on this, if you're doing this, you don't feel it. But if you're choked up, you kind of feel it a little bit. Right here, it's a little sharp. And you do if you're pinching like this. But as you're pushing, I mean, I don't, I'm pushing really, really hard. You feel it a little bit, but it's not bad. Overall, just generic EDC use, excluding hard use, it's going to be super comfortable in hand. This does have that wood grain pattern, kind of like that spiral. That's a very, very cool thing. And we have this accent ring around the pivot, or the pivot collar rather, that is like this gray titanium finish. I don't know if that accents titanium, but I do know this pocket clip is titanium, which lends into a really, really cool situation of, like you're, you're starting to see more and more, I did that just to verify my own sanity here, little magnets. Um, you're, you're starting to see more and more knives with higher and higher quality materials at lower and lower prices, and that's an excellent thing. These liners are recessed, and let me see if I can get you that flashlight back out and kind of show you, see that? They are milled out. You got these circular milling holes all on the show side. On the liner lock side or the lock bar side, there's not much. There's, there's no milling really other than to cut out for the lock bar. These are recessed, as I said, which is nice. And then we have some T6, T6, T8, T6, T6. Now we wish those were T8, but, you know, it is what it is. I haven't taken it apart yet, so 
As long as it's not gooped up with uh, any blue or red Loctite, we should be fine. One other cool thing to note is that this pocket clip is actually mounted from the inside. So you can see, let's see here, right there, there's a screw that mounts the pocket clip from the inside, and that is that just lends to an even cleaner aesthetic of this guy. Very, very cool. And we haven't even gotten really to the blade other than the geometry of it. So let's jump onto the blade. We got some thumb studs here that are relatively out of the cutting path because they're right behind the finger choil. So the only time you're going to hit those thumb studs is if you're cutting this... Excuse me. I'm... <laughs> We're ghastly. All right, so it, you're cutting this way, and then you might hit those thumb studs. Other than that, those thumb studs are out of the way, which is awesome. And the major complaint about thumb studs is they're always in the cutting path. These ones are so far back, they're almost external stops. But the flipping action works just fine. You can reverse flick it. You can thumb flick it. Hey, it has a flipper tab. There you go. The action, as you can see, is very, very snappy, very, very good. No back and forth, no up and down. Haven't played with this, and it's perfectly centered. So CJRB kind of crushed it out of the park, and what I actually appreciate about CJRB here is there's so many design details that went into this knife in particular that it's different from all their other stuff, right? So it's not like Civivi where you're just pumping out stuff, pumping out stuff, pumping out stuff, and it all kind of looks the same. This looks different than anything that they have. I'm going to show some size comparisons because I forgot to do that. And one that I really want to pay attention to is the Feldspar. The Feldspar was the absolute dominator from CJRB that just killed it. And this is a Feldspar killer in my opinion, but it's a, it's a budget knife killer. This thing is awesome. So this is the AR RPM 9 blade steel, which, you know, powdered form blade steel under $100. That's fantastic. By the way, this knife is coming in at $60. Is it 60? 60 or 70. I think it's, I think it was $68, but I could, yeah, it was like $68 I think. So on White Mountain Knives, you can get this right now. Use my promo code EEDC and you'll get 10% off. So you'll get six or $7 off of that price right there. And they do have this exact model. They did have a red Micarta model, which I don't know if it was an exclusive from White Mountain Knives or not. But that is sold out. But the black one is still in stock. I checked right before making this video. Talking about the, the blade a little bit more. We have a swedge that comes all the way down. The edges aren't knocked down, but it has this black PVD coating on there, which is relatively strong. Not going to be as strong as, say, DLC in some scenarios. But I haven't scratched it yet, and I have used the crap out of this knife. So that's a, that's a cool thing. The factory edge that it came with, by the way, once again, kudos. Now, is it on Civivi's level? Ah... Uh, Civivi does awesome with their factory edges as of lately. They're like damn near mirror finished and they like pop hairs off your arm. This can still pop hairs off my arm despite using it. Eh, maybe it needs to be strapped up a little bit. Oh, there it goes. Doing a little bit. But it's it's just not as good as Civivi's. But that doesn't mean that it's bad. It's actually a really decent factory edge. A couple more things to note is access to this liner lock is really well done. You can see here, you can see the liner. So it's not protruding, but you can attack it. Now, even better, and CJRB seems to do this more than Civivi, they did some scalloping on this liner right here, which makes it really comfortable to, to address. The only thing that makes it slightly uncomfortable is this knife is so thin. It's, it's like, it's not hard to get in there, but you definitely feel how thin the knife is when you go to do this. I mean, 400,000 thick in total with contoured scales, this thing, if you didn't have a contouring, this thing would be like 350, 340 thousandths thick, and that's just ridiculous. That's like neutron territory, right? All right, let's get you, let's lastly, let's kind of end with the size comparisons because that's what I should have done already, but we slacked. So here is your CJRB Feldspar and your mini feldspar as you can see this is the same exact size as the feldspar and what maybe we have a comparison coming up but you can see the design language is there we got the we got the recessed pocket clip which i didn't really talk about because it's not mounted from the inside out which hey what did you just do here on all your cjrbs you got a recessed pocket clip with fat flathead screws what you guys can do that oh that's so cool all right so vivi looking at you but 
as you can see, the feldspar in this have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences too. The feldspar is a little bit thicker. The feldspar is a little bit thicker in the blade stock and the behind the edge as well, but it does come to a little bit more of a point. So you do have a better puncturing job here, but with the with the blah, 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 scoria, you're going to get a lot more slicing power. So, and another thing I talked about, typical CJRB fashion, they did scallop the liner, and that's a good thing. So, I wish I had the brazen, because I feel like, did I get rid of the brazen? I think I did. I, I wish I had the brazen still, because I would love to compare this to the brazen. So here is your Civivi Praxis and your Civivi Elementum. While it's the same size as the Praxis, and the cutting edge is just a little bit less, and then the sharpening choils kind of look the same, it does kind of remind me closer to the Elementum in like the profile itself. It's kind of unique. Let's see if I got it. Where is it? Yeah, it kind of looks similar to the fixed blade Elementum's blade. Love that fixed blade Elementum. All right, all right, all right. Let's get your rat sandwich. Here is your rat model one, which is slightly longer and a lot more cutting edge. And then your rat model two, which is pretty, pretty short by comparison. You're looking at maybe almost an inch shorter as far as the rat model one. And then, like I said, I have to left that stuff on there. As far as the rat model one goes, you're maybe about a quarter to a half an inch shorter, but the rat model two, you're about a full inch shorter. All right, last but not least, let's get you guys like an obnoxious comparison, right? Like, why not? Wa-blam! Here is your Kaiser Sheepdog XL and your Kershaw Launch 10. As you can see, drastically smaller than the Kaiser Sheepdog XL and drastically larger than the Launch 10. So, now that we've done the size comparisons and completely gone out of order with the review itself... Just overall thoughts, ergonomics, this thing's a killer for EDC, maybe not hard use. Sliceability, it's getting like a 9 or a 10 out of 10, it's fantastic. AR RPM 9, basically the powdered form of 9CR18 MOV, pretty damn good. And then you have some recessed liners and a little bit of like titanium, you know, just a little touch here and there of elegance to it. And uniqueness, all for $70. Or if you go on White Mountain, I have $63 with my promo code EEDC. But point being here is this thing knocks it out of the park. And it's so crazy because with Civivi, I got the Knox, I got the Perf, I got the Bow. And each one that came in, I'm like, budget knife of the year, budget knife of the year, budget knife of the year. And then the CJRB Scoria came in, kind of out of left field for me because I wasn't in tune with what was going on in the knife world. And holy crap, guys, this thing... I don't know how you can beat this as budget knife of the year. It just fits every bill. You, you, it, it's just the attention to detail and the differences. I mean, here's your feldspar. This reminded me of the feldspar, and then I put them next to each other, and you're like, not really. CJRB really hasn't made a knife that looked like this. And it's such a pleasant experience to experience something new from a company that's a budget knife company that's just not pumping things out. Let's go back and let's look at um, shit, the Tigris. Okay, so you're checking out the Tigris. Totally different design. Yeah, they kind of took the crag with that giant blade, but it's nowhere near the crag because the crag is thick. It's beefy. You're going to like hack through stuff, kind of like the Kaiser Sheepdog XL. But it's way different than the crag, both in the handle profile, the thinness of the blade, the blade materials, everything. I didn't mention this is on ceramic ball bearings. It's just... I appreciate the slower drops of knives where they do a ton of just little things to something that make it so entirely different that you're just not being force fed new models just to be force fed new models. Now is Civivi probably doing better than CJRB? Hell yeah, there's, there's those of us that'll buy up each and every one that comes out, reviewers and non-reviewers alike, just collectors. And so, yeah, business model, they might be doing better. But in my opinion, quality, CJRB's got it here. This is a fantastic, fantastic example of what CJRB can do and is doing.
that is all I got for you guys today. This is the CJRB Scoria. We did the Giant Mouse Max Ace Nimbus. And then the Asher Knife Spyro First Impressions. My name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp. Stay safe. Remember, this is available right now as of a day ago. Because this is posting in a day. And just go to White Mountain Knives. Use my promo code. You get it for like 60, 63 bucks. You guys stay sharp. Stay safe. Have a great freaking rest of your day, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is my Patreon. This is my Instagram, EverydayEDC underscore 77. I'm going to do a special shout out to all the Patreons. John K, Sammy, Eggs and Ham, Jason M, Dogtooth, Kaiba, Mickey, Wolf, and Captain Steve. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great freaking day.